If you are in the market for a car, you probably ask yourself whether buying or leasing is the best option. Or more importantly, what is the best option where you can really get the biggest bang for your buck? You know that a car dealer is incentivized by the option that makes them the most amount of money. But what is the cheapest option for you when you're looking to get a car? After running through the numbers, I was shocked with what the best option was and wanted to share with you the results. In this video, we are going to go over the three main ways to purchase a car, the cheapest option, as well as important considerations that you should know. So let's get into it. Main options. The first way to purchase a car is to buy it outright in cash. This way you don't need to worry about ongoing payments or interest. But I know that this may not be the easiest option for most of us. But let's use this option as our status quo when comparing with our two other options. Now the second option is to finance the car. You can put down a deposit based on how much you saved up and then receive financing for the rest or the difference. The cars will be your to keep at the end of the term, but you would need to pay installments and interest on the borrowed money going forward. The third option is to lease the car. This essentially means that you are renting the car when you use it for a set period of time, such as two or three years. You don't need to worry about the future value of the car and you have the flexibility to switch out to a new car at the end of your lease. That being said, it's not your car to keep and there will be restrictions with what you can and cannot do with the car. Now that you understand your options, let's jump into the cash calculations to determine the cheapest option. Let's say that you are in the market for a Jeep Wrangler that costs $48,486 after taxes and fees, but with just the standard options with no bells and whistles. Here are the assumptions that we are going to make for the calculations, which are actual terms taken from the Jeep website. We're going to be using a three year period with 18 kilometers per year or 54,000 kilometers at the end of three years. You'll be making monthly installments with current interest rates of 1.99% for financing and 7.99% for leasing. And there will be two variables that we will be playing around with. In the first scenario, you'll be putting down a $0 deposit, so no deposit down, and we'll be playing around with the resale value of the car after three years as either $30,000 or $35,000, which is a range that I've taken based on some research I've done on this website here. Obviously, vehicle costs fluctuates, and right now it is quite pricey to buy a vehicle especially used ones so we'll be using this range for room for error in case the vehicle cost fluctuates at the end of the three-year term and how that impacts the overall cost of using the vehicle so let's jump into the calculations so just to refresh your memory and go over the assumptions again the period is for 36 months so three years you're going to be using it for 18,000 kilometers per year there is going to be no deposit so zero dollars down and the resale value is going to be 30 $5,000. Now, as you can see on this flip side, all the other assumptions are going to be the same. The only thing that is going to be different is the resale value of $30,000. And just based on the resale value, we're going to see how that impacts our calculation. Now, just going over the first section over here, and we're going to be comparing this across the three different options of buying it outright in cash, financing, and leasing. As you can see here, the value of the car is going to be the same across all three options. It's going to be $48,486 after taxes and fees. When it comes to monthly payments, obviously, if you buy it outright, there are no monthly payments, so nothing to worry about here. When it comes to financing, these are numbers straight out of the website. So you'll be paying a monthly installment of $1,386, considering it's a 36 month period, as you can see here. So your total payments are $50,000. And this takes into consideration the financing interest rate of 1.99%. And over the term, the three years, you will be paying interest of $1,518. Now, if we were to compare this with the leasing, you can see that the total cost is $511 per month. And over the three year period, your total payments are $18,396. And this is taking into consideration the interest rate of 7.99%. So the interest that is calculated here is $4,446, which is quite a bit higher than the financing considering the difference in the interest rates. 
Now, as you can see here for cash, there is an amount for the opportunity cost. This is because when you are paying the price of the car upfront, there is an opportunity cost of what you could have done with that cash instead. So the minimum opportunity cost that I've calculated here is the same as the interest that you would have paid on the financing. And I would say that this is quite conservative considering that you could probably get four to five percent in the current market with GICs. So I would say you could expect maybe even double that for opportunity costs of around $3,000 as an opportunity cost, but I just left it as the same as a financing just to keep things simple. So that is a cost that I'll be adding onto the cash option. Now the total mileage is going to be the same across all three options. And as I mentioned, the resale value after three years is $35,000. And this is a value that I picked up based on some quick research I've done on actual resale values of Jeeps from 2020, considering that's three years ago and seeing how much that sells for. Now, that being said, I know that the car market right now is quite inflated. It is quite expensive to get even used cars so that is why I'm doing another calculation with a lower resale value to see how much that gets affected. But for now, let's use $35,000 and be optimistic. Now the total cost for cash is $13,486. For financing is $15,004 and for leasing it's $18,396. So you can see that the cash option is cheaper, but there is a caveat to this where if you add the opportunity cost of the interest rate is actually on par with the financing option and can actually be seen as more expensive if you take into consideration that you could get a higher interest rate where you could expect an interest rate of double this amount. So the cash option is actually the second cheapest option where the financing can be considered the cheapest option and that comes in second place and the leasing is third place. Moving on, let's assume that the resale value is actually 30,000 and not 35,000 after three years. All the numbers above are going to be the same the only difference is the cost. Now the cost is going to be the initial value of the car that was purchased less the resale value, which comes out with $18,000. $486 for financing is $20,004 and for leasing is $18,396. And if we take into consideration the opportunity cost, the cost for cash is actually 20,000 or more if the interest rate is higher. So in this case, we can actually see that the cheapest option when the resale value is lower is leasing the vehicle instead of purchasing the vehicle. Some takeaways from scenario one is that higher the resale value of the car after three years, it is better to purchase the car, whether it is outright cash or through financing. The opposite is true where lower the resale value, the cheaper it is to lease. Depending on special deals going on with interest rates for financing, the opportunity cost of putting cash down can be high. In the case of financing, Jeep is having a promotion where it's offering 1.99% for financing their cars. It can be cheaper to finance than buy outright, considering that you can invest that money and receive interest of four to five percent on safe investments like GICs in the current market. For example, HSBC Canada is offering up to 5.10 percent on GICs. In the second scenario, you saved up some money and you put down a five thousand dollar deposit and we're also going to be playing around with the resale value of the car after three years using 30k and 35k. Now moving on to scenario two, we're going to assume that you put down a deposit of five thousand dollars. So everything else stays it's the same. The only difference is that you pay down a deposit of $5,000. We'll see how the numbers change in this case. So after putting down a deposit of $5,000, in the case of cash, it doesn't matter since you're paying it upfront. So you have no monthly payments. When it comes to financing, you can see that the monthly payments have decreased to $1,246. For leasing, the payments decreased to $337. With the same interest rates, your interest when it comes to financing is $1,370. So you can see that the interest compared to no money down is actually not that different. It's $1,500 versus $1,300 or $1,400-ish. Now, when it comes to leasing, we can see that the interest rate has decreased quite a bit since we're saving a lot on the high interest rate of 7.99%. So you're paying an interest of $3,182 versus our previous option of $4,000. $1,446 when you pay nothing down. Similar to the opportunity cost calculation, 
and at the end of it. So in this case, using the resale value of $35,000, you can see that the cheapest option will be the cash or the financing. Like I said, considering opportunity cost is higher, it's cheaper to finance than to buy it outright. And for leasing, it will still be the more expensive option considering the high resale value. Now, considering that the resale value is $30,000 and you put down $5,000, all the numbers above here stays the same, even the opportunity cost. The only numbers that are different are going to be the calculations here. So the cost incurred in this scenario when the resale value is $30,000 is going to be $19,856, including the opportunity cost. For financing, it's also $19,856. $19,856 and for leasing it's going to be $17,132. In this case because of the resale value is lower it's going to be cheaper to lease and also because of the $5,000 down payment you're able to save a lot more on interest rates. Some takeaways from scenario two. In the case of financing a car it actually doesn't make a huge difference whether you put down a deposit because of the lower interest rate of 1.99%. However the opposite is true when it comes to leasing putting down a deposit can drastically decrease your monthly installments as well as overall interest rates. And similar to scenario one, it's going to be cheaper to purchase the car if the resale value is going to be on the higher end after three years. And the opposite is true when it comes to leasing. So what is the cheapest option? As we just walk through the calculations, it really comes down to three factors that you should consider. The first one is how much money are you willing to put down on a deposit? The second one are the current interest rates on financing versus leasing options that are currently available. The third is the future resale value of your car. On top of these three factors to consider, let's tie everything together and go over the pros and cons of each option. Pros and cons. So when it comes to buying the vehicle outright, the pro is the peace of mind of not worrying about making monthly installments or paying interest. The con with purchasing a car outright is that vehicles tend to be depreciating assets off the driveway, which means that over time, it doesn't go up in value, it actually decreases in value. In fact, the moment you go off the driveway, it is said that it can decrease anywhere from 10 to 20% in its value straight away. Another con is that it requires a large upfront savings. So you're putting down a large money upfront. And with this, there is an opportunity cost of what you could have done with that money. So you could have invested that money elsewhere and received a higher return versus locking that amount up in a car that is depreciating in value. Now, now, when it comes to financing, the pro is that you're able to own your car with other people's money, especially if you are able to get a low interest rate. And with owning your car, there is flexibility to do whatever you want to do with your car, whether it is making modifications or making any changes to it. Another pro with financing is that it can be seen as a cheaper option in the long run if the resale value is high. So at the end of your financing term, you can continue to drive the car, which can be seen as a cheaper option option or you can even resell the car for a high value. Now the con with financing are the high monthly payments as well as the interest that you are making. Now with leasing, the pros are the flexibility to switch out the car or to upgrade to a better car after a few years and you don't need to worry about the hassle of selling a car. So this can be a stress point outside of money. Now the con are also going to be restrictions with the car since it is not yours to keep and since you're simply renting. It. So there can be certain restrictions related to mileage where you have a set mileage that you can use and anything that goes over, you will be charged a penalty related to how much you used over the set mileage. There are also going to be restrictions around modifications as well as if you get into an accident, there are going to be set places that you can go to repair your car because if you choose to go to a cheap place and it didn't fix your car properly, the car dealer, when you return your car, will ask you to make the proper repairs and that can be extra money out of your pocket. Now we talked a lot about the cost of purchasing the car. You also want to think about the cost of maintaining the car after you've purchased it. I would think you need a minimum of $300 per month on costs such as car insurance, which can be around $150, gas, which can be about $100 a month, parking, which can be $25, as well as routine maintenance, which can be $25. As you can see, the costs here that I listed are pretty low. So I would say a minimum of $300 or more on top of your leasing or financing costs. As you saw, owning a car is not cheap and you want to get the best deal. So make sure that you really take advantage of tax incentives out there, such as rebates for zero emission vehicles. If you are a business owner, find out how you 
you can get a tax write-off when you purchase your car as well as get a tax deduction on ongoing vehicle costs by watching my video here. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!